somebody give God praise for Jesus? That'd be okay if it was for me, but I said, somebody give our God praise for Jesus. You know, your risen Savior, the one who died on the cross for you. We've been engaged in worship for about an hour and 20 minutes. And we've had Kim come up and uh, me and Pastor Queen kind of laughed because we said she didn't preach. We don't really need to come up here and preach after she preached. We had Daphne come up. And one of the things that continues to keep going through my mind, because this is a Friday evening, this is a good Friday service, and we could literally be anywhere, right? But this, this weekend is the hallmark of our Christianity, right? And when I think about the concept of Good Friday, one of the things that comes to mind is the definition of good, right? You, typically, we think good is synonymous with a feeling, right? But definition tells us that it means of or possessing the qualities necessary to achieve a goal. So when we think about Good Friday, we got to get into the mindset of understanding that it really doesn't matter how it looks and it really doesn't matter how it feels, but if it possesses the qualities necessary to achieve a goal, then that makes it good. Y'all are sitting kind of tight and I, if you're anything like me, Steph talked about the hell that he went through. Literally this entire month has been a, just a downward spiral as it pertains for everything in my household. And so when I think about the concept of Good Friday, the only thing that keeps me going is the fact of the matter is that it does not have to feel good for it to do some good. I don't know what brought you in here. I don't know if you needed someone to pump and to prime you. But I, if we're saying that the theme is that we're being changed, what I really want you to understand is that there has to come a point where you decide that it don't always have to feel good. It don't always have to look good. I, you know, my money could be acting funny and my change acting strange, but because I serve a risen Savior, it's all good. Matter of fact, it's all God on this Good Friday service. I really am not going to be before you long. I, I, I really want us to understand the magnitude of this evening, and, and, and even more so the magnitude of the theme being changed. That one simple act from one single man reverberated through time for a perpetual, ever-evolving, continual process if we submit to it if we surrender to it, if we decide that we're going to go along with the flow. Amen? All right. Um, Matthew 26 and 26. Um, thank you. And 26. And then um, you all can also put a pin in 1 Corinthians 11 and 24. While we getting it on the screen, y'all have it? Say amen. If you still finding it, say hold up, swole up. We okay back there? We got it? Okay. <clears throat> and it reads, as they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples saying, take this and eat it for this is my body. 
As they were eating, Jesus took some bread and blessed it. Then he broke it in pieces and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this and eat it, for this is my body. 1 Corinthians 11 and 24 says, And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. For a brief moment, I want to talk to you from the topic of becoming broken change. Becoming broken change. Already we have begun to hear all the different kind of adjectives describing the process of change. We've heard that it's anything but easy. Rarely is it pretty. Rarely is it short and sweet. Rarely is it a one and done. Rarely is it ever a smooth process. Change is awkward and can be slow. It can be gruesome, it can hurt, and it can shame you. Change rearranges some things. It molds you, it transforms you, it conforms you, reforms, and can also deform you. It can challenge you. It is a continual and ever-evolving process. If you're not careful, change can and will wear you out. Change is something that will press you out of your comfort zone. I'm talking about change, y'all. Anybody know what change? Change is inequitable. It's no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter who you are what your pedigree is, who your family is, who your mama, your daddy, your sisters, your cousins, your uncles, your brothers. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter how much money you make. It doesn't matter how old you are, how educated you are, how attractive you are, how prepared you are, how careful you think you might have been. Change will find you for better or for worse. It's either going to learn you or churn you. Change is an adjustment that cannot be outrun. It will cause you to look at yourself differently. I've heard it said that change is not looking for a resting place but a launching place. It exposes you and is only loyal to its intended outcome, stopping at nothing to achieve its goal because it will break you if it has to. I'm talking about change. And what I found is that change cares nothing about what I think of its process. It will, in fact, abandon me to my stubbornness because change is necessary and will happen whether I want it to or not. Change is, in fact, the only constant that exists and yet is equally the most resisted concept. Like truth, people like the idea of change until, of course, it comes time to change. And while it can be resisted, I have also learned that change is a process that's best greeted with a spirit of submission. A surrendered posture to embrace what it seeks to introduce you to, what it seeks to develop and deepen inside of you. And I believe beyond a shadow of a doubt that if, in fact, we're ever really going to truly fulfill what it is that God has called and commissioned us to do, we must indeed submit to the process of change and avail ourselves to become in broken change. Broken change. Broken by definition means disrupted by change. Change means a transformation or a modification, a deviation from what is considered normal. So what am I saying? What I'm saying is that we must be willing to become disrupted for transformation. That is, we must be willing to have our everyday comings and goings interrupted, disrupted, and made awry simply so that, so that God can conform us and transform us into who it is he's called us to be. Tap your neighbor and say, it's time to become broken I said tap your neighbor and say it's time to become broken change. Y'all got to be obedient first. <laughs> when we look at our scripture, I believe that we have been given an analogy or a blueprint, if you will, for becoming broken change. We we are analogous to the bread, meaning we must become 
like the bread, okay? So the first thing we see in scripture is that Jesus took the bread and blessed it, okay? Looking closer at the meaning of blessed, blessed means to be made holy or consecrated. Consecrated means to be set apart. And so whenever you find that you have submitted to the process of becoming broken change, you must understand that your blessing is not the tangible manifestations of goods, but rather the amalgamation of isolation, insulation, insolation, and solitude. I'll say that again. That when you submit to the process of becoming broken change, you must understand that blessings are no longer about what God can do for you via your bank account. It ain't about a new house or a new car or how much money is in your bank, but rather it becomes your ability to recognize that I'm going to set you apart for a purpose greater than you. And if, in fact, you submit to the process of being consecrated, there's levels to this thing. Isolation, insulation, insolation, and then solitude, isolation. Whenever you have been consecrated, Christ took the bread. He raised it from out of its regular environment, okay? And all of a sudden, it was resting alone in the hands of Christ. The first step of your consecration experience is that you will find yourself by yourself. You begin to look around and suddenly it just, the landscape looks different. Those who you were rolling with ain't no longer around you. People begin to fall off. Connections don't seem to keep up. All of a sudden, it's just me, myself, and I. I don't know what happened. I can't explain where they went. All of a sudden, it's just me. And that first stage is gruesome because you begin to wonder why, what's happening. Then you move into insulation where, where this is the human response because see, we don't like to be alone. So you try everything to try to connect to keep people around you to bring them in and yet try as you might it never sticks things fizzle before they even get started I'm like what up where where I try to be accommodating I try I try to go out my way, but no matter what happens, nothing is getting in. And the only thing heading out is everything that he's desiring for it to come out. Insulation, okay? Then the third stage is insolation, S-O-L, meaning you are directly in contact with the sun's rays. This is the time where it's just you and God, where he's feeding into you what it is that you are called to be. This is the process where you begin to understand that the first few stages weren't punishment, but that they were preparation for what was coming next. This is where you begin to see things, the dark crevices in your being that can no longer stand to be in existence because of where he's taking you to and once you master that, then he releases you into a thing called solitude. This is where you decide the company you keep. Before you couldn't get in, even if I wanted you to, but now at this time, I'm qualifying these jokers right now. This is where I decide I'd rather be alone than to entertain common company. I understand the difference between a covenant and a convenient connection. If you ain't moving like I'm moving, then you can move on by. Because I've decided that if you're going to consecrate me, I'm going to get everything you got for me. I'm committed to becoming broken chains. Yeah, yeah, 
And you start qualifying some jokers. You, got, you start paying attention to how people move. You, you start watching that what they say doesn't line up with what they do. I, I see you because I see you. <laughs> Recognizing that consecration is preparation for separation, okay? Consecration is preparation for separation. And consecration preserves you. It preserves you. Pre-serve. Pre-serve. Pre-serve, okay? Pre meaning before. Serve meaning my ministry. Pre meaning before, serve meaning my ministry. Before I can minister to you, I got to be prepared. I got to be consecrated. I got to be qualified because preserving me means I am protected so that when I serve you, none of me gets on to you and vice versa. First step, consecration. And I'm almost finished, I promise. Consecration. Jesus takes the bread, holds it in his hands. Now it's elevated. Understand that this is necessary, okay? Because it's in the consecration phase that you understand that consecration, while it's preparation for separation, it also happens via elevation, which means I now have a perspective about what it is I'm about to go through. If I stay low, then I'm going to mistake what happens to me after this. But because I've been elevated, I have a vantage point that enables me to see what it is I'm going through. I begin to recognize that he's not punishing me. He's preparing me. And if he's preparing me, that means he's about to send me. Because when he sends me, i got to accomplish a task. Come on. But I can only do that if I'm willing to be interrupted to be transformed. I'm willing to become broken, change. Come on, somebody say broken, change. Broken, change. So he, he picks it up. He's elevated it. It's resting. It's still resting in the master's hands. It's still resting in the master's hands. Isolated, insulated, insulated, and now in solitude. But now, the Bible says that after he's consecrated, he's blessed the bread. Now he breaks it. Got to understand that consecration is necessary. Because when he elevates you, he's elevating your way of processing and understanding what is about to happen. When he breaks you, it's not because he wants to make you a victim. It's not because he wants to wound you. It's because he needs to press up out of you that which will get in the way of him using you. So when he consecrates you, he gets you into a position where you begin to have the proper perspective about everything that he's breaking off you. What do I mean? Okay, so when I'm in um, consecration, it's like, okay, I got some re rejection. Okay, you got some rejection? Let me break that off of you because I don't need you moving into a world thinking that you're going to be rejected when I've sent you and already declared you as accepted. Okay, you got an ego problem? Watch this. I'm about to prepare you in such a way that you're going to serve everybody that would seek to destroy you because it ain't about you, baby. Got some unforgiveness? I got something for that too. Whatever it is, that's in the way God's going to break you. He's going to disrupt it to transform you so that you can be broken, change. So we got consecration via elevation to prepare you for separation because the next and final stage is dissemination. God's got to send you out. You've been called to feed the need of those who don't even know they need you. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
take, eat. This is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. I need you to understand that I'm breaking you in areas that are going to allow you to meet the needs of those who you will come in contact with. You've been called to feed the needs of those who would like to slay you, who would like to reject and deject you, those who would like to tear you down, those who think they have no need of you, people who would like to ostracize and count you out. You've been called to feed their need. And if I'm not careful about the process of consecration, I will walk around assigning malicious intention when in fact they're really just a part of my process. So when I get elevated through consecration, I don't have time to travail in the trivial, majoring in the minor and making sense of the mundane because I'm on purpose and on mission for what it is he's called me to do. When I've recognized that I've been consecrated, I don't deal with you the way you deal with me because I've become broken chain. When I've been consecrated, I recognize that I could cuss you, but rather I'm going to bless you. We've got to get to a point where we stop resisting the process of him transforming us because too many of us respond out of our flesh. Broken. Disrupted, change, transformation. Broken, interrupted, change, transformation. I'm willing for you to interrupt me, God, to introduce me to who it is you truly called me to be. Because it was never about me in the way I thought it was in the first place. You matter but not the way you think you do. I tell my Bible study, listen, life is not happening to you. It's happening for you. Because as long as you remain a victim, Kubler-Ross says it's very easy. It takes very little effort to be a victim. It takes very little effort to be a victim. But when you decide that you are going to be victorious, When you decide that he has called me for greater, that he has called me to impact and infect change, when you realize, when you not only realize but accept it, then you realize I don't have time to do what you do. It ain't about blaming or shaming. It's about being real, and I'm on kingdom mission. So if you set me apart, God, I'll, I'll rest in your hands. If you set me apart, God, I'll rest in your hands. If you set me apart, I won't resist the process because I need to come into the fullness of who you've called me to be. I'm tired of the cycles of my choices. I'm tired of running in the rhythm of my routine. I'm tired of living lower than what you've called me to be. I'm tired of thinking that all there is to life is what I wake up and see. I'm tired of never meeting my goals. I'm tired. I believe that there's greater in store. I believe that there's more for me than I see. I believe that greater is in me than he that is in the world. I believe he's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. So if I got to access that, then I've got to submit to the process of being interrupted to be transformed into the likeness of the one who did one single act to reverberate through the life. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Broken change. Broken change. Broken change means I doesn't have to feel good for it to be some good. I'm surrendered to the process. Lord, interrupt me and introduce me to who you've called me to be. God bless you.